Hello, today we're making another effect for Invisible Woman. This time it's a force ball that can fit on her arm to cover her hand, or another figure's hand. Or you can use the same technique to make it fit on another action figure's head to suffocate him. You don't want to make her mad. A list of materials I'll be using in this project and links to where you can get them will be in the video description. Let's get started. To start the force orb, I started with making a mold of half of a bouncy ball with Uyumaru. And if you don't know how to make a mold using that material, check out my video on how to make a two-part mold. And I will link it up in the top right corner up there. No sense repeating myself though. And so here's the mold. Next, I'm going to pull off one of Sue's hands, set it aside. Then using a low temperature glue gun, I'm just going to put a ring of glue around the very edge of her wrist. The glue on Sue's wrist has had time to harden, so I'm going to carefully peel that off using my fingernails. I'm going to apply a little bit of vegetable cooking oil to the inside of the mold so that it will be easier to remove the hot glue later on. The ring gets put in the bottom of the mold. And then I'm going to apply a little bit of hot glue along the edge of it. And I'm squishing the glue down with a little bit of saran wrap or clear plastic cling wrap. I want to try to get this glue as thin as I can. Now last time I had used a little bit of parchment paper to smooth out the glue and squish it down. The problem with parchment paper is it leaves a little bit of the waxy residue on the project and so the glue isn't as clear afterwards. So I thought I'd give this a try. We'll see how it works though. One thing about the saran wrap though or the clear plastic wrap is the hot glue does stick to it. So you're going to need multiple pieces. After the glue cools though, you could pull the plastic wrap free. Now I highly recommend a low temperature glue gun for this project just because your fingers are going to be really close to the glue and that plastic wrap isn't going to offer any protection. As you can see, I'm getting glue glue all over me. <laughs> so yeah, don't use a high temperature gun on this project. It helps to work in small spurts of glue at a time just so that you could squish it down more before it hardens all the rest of the way. My glue gun has been on longer now and the plastic wrap is really starting to stick to the glue more. I think it's starting to melt to it actually, but that's okay. Once the glue cools down, just peel off as much as you can. Allow the glue some more time to cool before you try to peel it up off your mold. Now this Oyamaru is squishy, so it's easier to get started if you just kind of squish it on one side and then use your fingernail to kind of start dragging. And just work in small sections, working your way around. Now for the second half of the orb, I'm going to just fill this whole mold up with glue. And it's a small enough area. I'm going to try to do as much of it as I can in one shot. So we'll see how this goes. I'm going to allow that time to cool and then I'm going to fill in any holes. Looks like I have a pretty big one right here and another one there, some there. So maybe that wasn't the best of idea. Maybe you're better off working in small sections. <laughs> Good to know. Okay, now I'm going to fill in those missing gaps, and we'll try that again. Okay, I got the, the half a sphere covered with the glue. I don't know what's going on here. Looks like I have like a air bubble or something. Just something to be aware of, I guess, so it doesn't happen on yours. You can trim the jagged edge of the piece with a pair of scissors. Now to make it easier to line things up later, make sure your semi-spheres are as flat as you can be on a flat surface like a table. And it'll make it a lot easier to line it up later on. So just use your scissors and keep trimming off little pieces until they sit fairly flat on the table. To attach the two halves of the sphere, I'm going to glue in some disc magnets. And I'm going to do that by just picking whatever looks like the worst side, like maybe this side right here with this big crack. And I'm going to make a little shelf out of hot glue right there. So I just put a drop in there. And then I quickly take one of my magnets. And you just set the magnet on that little shelf there. 
and then I'm going to put some more glue on top of that to embed it in there. Now this part you have to be careful because the tip of the hot glue gun I'm using is metal, so that magnet's going to want to stick to it. So I want to keep my distance. And I'm just going to use some of that cling wrap to kind of smooth that and flatten it out so that it would be level with the level with the edge of the half of the sphere. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side of the sphere. And I'm going to repeat the process with the other half of the sphere, putting the magnets on both sides again. Okay, now we'll see how it turned out. And we got a big gap here. I'm going to need to move this shelf a little lower. So if that happens to you, just take your scissors and you cut out that whole shelf in the magnet. And you just try it again. This time glue it in a little bit lower. Okay, let's see how they fit together this time. Okay, that's much better. We still have some gaps, but well, there's not much you can do about that. Just make sure that your semi-sphere is as flat as you can before you move on to gluing your magnets. Next, I'm going to paint the ball with some clear blue paint. And I'm just going to be applying the paint to the inside along these little ridges and cracks. While I'm busy painting, let me share some viewer photos. It's so much fun to see people making my projects. First up is Goongala, and he made this Cyclops Optic Blast project, and he put his own little spin on it. It looks great, and Cyclops standing on that cookbook makes me wonder, do you think he could heat up food with his Optic Blast? It might work. Maybe. And he'd probably just end up burning everything. Let me know your theory in the comments down below. Next up is Dr. Zomba 16. And he's been super busy making lots of projects, including Dr. Octopus Arms, using the technique from my Venom Tendrils. That's a really good idea. Then he also made a cape for Batman, a face sword, inspired from the Fire Effects tutorial, a laptop, tablet, and a couple of phones. Wow! I told you he's been busy. Nice work. Then Dark King made the Ice Effect project, and his turned out looking awesome. That's a great photo, too. And the final photo is by Lipless Titan 7, and he made the bed project for his figures. Very functional, and thanks for sharing. I think that was everyone. If you try any of my projects and want me to share your photos, too, just mention that I have your permission to share your photos and send them to me on social media or link them down in the comments below. That's it for today, but I'll be back in the future with more toy crafting projects, so make sure you subscribe if you'd like to stay updated. And thanks for watching.